Hi, thanks for joining me. Happy New Year today. I've got a fun little polynomial problem all to do with the year 2024. We have a function f of x which is a polynomial of degree 2022 and it has the property that f of 1 is 1, f of 2 is a half, f of 3 is a third and so on down to f of 2023 is 1 over 2023. We want to find f of 2024. If you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself, and I'm going to dive straight into a solution. Okay, so to begin this solution, we're going to introduce another function, g of x. And g of x is simply going to be x multiplied by f of x minus 1. Now, what can I say about g of x? Well, since f of x has degree 2022, g of x, because I've got x times f of x in it, this is going to have degree 2023. Okay, and what else can I say about g of x? Well, I can actually give you all 2023 of its roots, and we're going to use this fact over here. So let's just take 7, for example. So I claim that the roots of g of x are all the positive integers from 1 up to 2023. Let's see why. So let's just use 7 as, as an example. What is g of 7? Well, that's going to be 7 times f of 7 minus 1. But f of 7 we know is just 1 over 7. And so this is just 7 uh, times a 7 minus 1, which of course is 0. And so that works for 7, but it also works for all the other positive integers between 1 and 2023. So we've managed to find all 2023 roots of this degree 2023 polynomial, which means we can then factorize it. So we can say that g of x is some constant a, which we don't know yet, multiplied by x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 times so on, all the way up to x minus 2023. Lovely, we've got what g of x is. And well, we kind of want to know what this constant a is, and we think about how we can work that out. Well, we can work it out quite easily by just substituting x as 0 up here. If we do that, we get g of 0 is 0 times f of 0. Now, we don't know what f of 0 is, but we do know that 0 times anything must be 0, so g of 0 must be minus 1. Lovely. Now, what's 0 when I plug it in down here? It's just a multiplied by minus 1 times minus 2 times minus 3, times so on, all the way up to minus 2023. And this is supposed to equal this minus 1 here. Okay, well, how can I simplify this left-hand side? Firstly, let's deal with the negative signs. How many are there? Well, there's 2,023 of them. So I've got minus 1 to the power of 2,023. But minus 1 to any odd number is minus 1, and so therefore I've just got minus 1 times a, times 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times so on up to 2023 which by definition is just 2023 factorial and this equals minus 1 and so just dividing both sides by minus 1 and then dividing by 2023 factorial I get that a is this very small constant 1 over 2023 factorial amazing we've worked out what our constant is so we know exactly what g of x is which means in order to work out f of 0, uh, sorry, f of 2024, all we need to do is substitute 2024 into this guy here. And we'll work out what g of 2024 is, and then we'll just have to rearrange up here. Okay, let's do that then. So g of 2024 then is a, which we've worked out is 1 over 2023 factorial, multiplied by 2024 minus 1, which is 2023. 2024 minus 2 is 2022 times 2024 minus 3, which is 2021, and so on down to 2024 minus 2023, which is just 1. And you'll notice here, this is precisely 2023 factorial, which very nicely cancels with that there. So we get that g of 2024 must be 1. Perfect. g of 2024 is 1. Let's now bring that back up here. So we get the g of 2024, which is 2024 times f of 2024 minus 1. That equals 1. So adding 1 to both sides and then dividing by 2024, we get the f of 2024 must be 1,012. Uh, sorry, 1 over 1,012. 1 over 1,012. Which is really, really nice. And, uh, well, I say really nice, really interesting, because it doesn't follow the pattern of having 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, and so on. Um, but 
it's a very nice problem. So obviously the automatic answer you might think of is the answer should be 1 over 2024 to fit in with the pattern, but the answer is actually 1 over 1012. And this is a very, very neat solution. And this is a pretty classic technique when you're dealing with these sorts of problems is to introduce a new polynomial where either you know the roots of it or maybe you know it's constant on some set of values. Um, but yeah, this is how we solve this particular problem. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Have a lovely new year and I'll catch you in the next one.